Let's go back. John Wall scoring 29 points, 11 assists in his first game, returning to D.C. after getting traded for Russell Westbrook. Bradley Beal scored 37, leading the Wizards to the win. After the game, Beal said about Wall, quote, even tonight, we're pushing each other, telling each other to get better, guarding each other. It's just competitive. It's a beautiful thing. Now, Beal's visual displeasure about the Wizards' rough start this season has been well documented on this show. And while Beal and the organization remain very steadfast in their commitment to each other, it does make for a lot of drama being played out in real time, which inspired our producers to create a brand new show within a show from the creators of As the Kings Turn. Bays of Our Lives, and Dances with T-Wolves. We are proud to present, well, take a look. This is the true story. True story. Of 17 strangers. Picked to play on a team. We're all adults. Work together. I can't do you guys' job, you guys can't do my job. And have their lives taped. That's frustrating. Find out what happens when people stop being polite. And start getting Bill. Final dog. The Bill world. These feet. I'm so, so happy. I'm so happy, Paul, as a former wizard yourself. (laughs) First of all, shouts to the Beal world. What do you think? Do you think that Bradley Beal is better or worse off without John Wall in D.C.? Well, I think he's better off because he's developed and morphed into this player that he's become, you know, one of the game's great scorers. He has the ball in his hand a lot more. And so, you know, I think that team with John Wall, they kind of like leveled out. They weren't going anywhere in the Eastern Conference. And so they had to make some moves. But uh, he's been spectacular. You can see the growth in his game. Uh, the way he's developed into an all-star, into a premier two-guard in this league, arguably the best two-guard in the league. And, uh, you know, due to with that saying, because John Wall's not there, the ball is in his hand. And he can develop and be more of a playmaker, more than just a shooter, as we looked at him as uh, all these years. Just a shooter who can make plays. Now he can do everything out there on the court. Make plays. He can run your point guard, two guard. And so, as you see with the stats, he's developed into quite a player, I would say. I want I want to know what G Wiz the mascot is up to in the Beal world, and what exactly is G Wiz? These are the pressing questions. These are questions but I actually we have. disagree a little bit with Paul. <laughs> yeah, I, th- I think I think he's a little worse off just simply because John Wall has outplayed Russell Westbrook this year. He's going to be on a team with one of two do- ball dominant point guards, or at least formerly in ball dominant point guards, and John Wall has been better than Russ. I agree with Paul in John Wall's absence. Brad Beal showed. He can be the number one option. He's a playmaker. He's a 30-plus point-a-game scorer. I think that version of Brad Beal would have sustained this season yeah. with John Wall still there as the Wizards' point guard. And given that John has outplayed Russ, at least so far, the Rockets are winning that trade. I think he's worse off just because I, th- I think Washington's record would probably be better with John Wall. Right. So he had already kind of emerged as the scorer, Paul, that you're talking about, the all-around player you're talking about. So we thought, when we thought John Wall was coming back to Washington this season, we thought, well, it's going to be a little interesting. Sort of the balance of power shifted a little bit, right? That, that John is going to have to allow more for Beal, as you heard us talking about, about that game. They're still close, right? John Wall said the other night, I still watch Wizards games because who wouldn't want to watch Bradley Beal? So we thought they would be able to work that out and be a force. I hear what you're saying, Paul, about, hey, they weren't really going anywhere with that team. They're not going anywhere right now. They have the second to worst yeah. record in the Eastern Conference. So I, I, I don't I don't know. I still think what's going to happen with Bradley Beal once we get to the trade li- deadline next month and then if he doesn't get dealt then once we get to the offseason is one of our most interesting stories in the NBA right now, which is why we have the Beal World DC. So happy with that. <laughs> Just like so it. happy. All right, let's circle back to the Nets who drained 27 threes last night in a win over the Kings without <coughs> Kevin Durant. Kyrie dropped 40. Harden 29, 14, and 13. And after the game, James said this. This was division right here. This uh, game itself, you know, no matter, you know, obviously we, KD, you know, is out uh, tonight, but, you know, it's next man up. And then it goes by like, I think from top to bottom, everyone has the same goal, and that's to win. Uh, obviously, DJ, you know, dealt with you know family um, over these last few days. He came in, he came off the bench, and Jeff started, and there was no conversation, there was no pouting. Um, it was a mentality that, all right, I'm come off the bench, I'm gonna do whatever it takes to impact the game, and he did that. So, uh, from top to bottom, no matter when your numbers called, you gotta be ready to come in and contribute, uh, no matter what it takes. And I think 
each individual guy has that mindset, and um, that's, you know, a championship-caliber team. I want to shout out DJ as well. I feel like last night and the last game he played in before the game he missed, uh, really impressive by him. So I, I agree with James there. Harden also saying last night, Zach, this was the vision he had for this team when he joined. Are you not impressed? Oh, I'm impressed. Their offense has been better than advertised. I mean, they're the greatest offensive team ever statistically when all three of those guys are on the floor and only two of them were on the floor uh, last night. And James is right from last week. They don't have to be a great defense if they're going to be this prolific on offense. They just have to be good enough. And the way Kyrie, James, and KD are playing, I mean, good luck stopping them. Good luck even limiting them. They're, they're that good offensively. Yeah, I think we got a, a sample of what this team is very capable of. You know, although it was the Sacramento Kings, they're still explosive. They got to be able to do this against a top-tier defense in the playoffs. But when you got three of the greatest scores we've ever seen in this game. I definitely see the vision, James. <laughs> By the way, producer Hillary and I are both obsessed with WandaVision, so he said that, and we were all like, vision, vision. Anyway, sorry. Thanks for watching ESPN on YouTube. For live streaming sports and premium content, subscribe to ESPN+.